Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Ken Kubota. I'm the director of data science at the Michael J. Fox Foundation. And this is the first time we're ever revealing and talking about our data strategy. Uh, my background is in computer science, electrical engineering, and I'm surrounded by microbiologists all day. So uh, it's really great to have this support. And um, uh, we'll tell you a little, about, bit, a little bit about what we're doing with the Transmar platform. Um, First, a primer on Parkinson's disease, what it is. It was originally diagnosed by James Parkinson's in, in 1817, uh, known as a shaking palsy. It is a uh, degenerative uh, disorder of the central nervous system. It's a movement disorder. It slows down the, um, uh, your ability to move. It is caused by um, the degeneration of your dopamine neurons in the center of your brain. Um, and that is the the primary cardinal symptoms of Parkinson's disease is slowness of movement, bradykinesia, tremor, and rigidity. But what is also becoming much more um, known is the uh, slow degradation of your autonomic uh, functions in the later stages of the disease. So it is really a, a whole brain disease. So a little bit about the Fox Foundation. We'll go a little bit more into it tomorrow. But uh, we are the largest uh, nonprofit on Parkinson's disease. Uh, we were founded in 2000 by the actor Michael J. Fox. Um, he was diagnosed uh, on that year. Um, where I come from is uh, I've, I've uh, come from um, working on a private uh, nonprofit around the same time uh, on behalf of Andy Grove, the former CEO of Intel. And so this is uh, kind of my background. We've always worked very closely with the Fox Foundation. And I just came, came on board on, as the director of data science uh, just last year. But uh, we've always worked very closely together. Um, the foundation has spent $450 million in scientific research for Parkinson's disease. Um, we work very closely with industry. $100 million worth of it has been working with biotechs and pharmaceutical companies, and now hopefully uh, with informatics companies as well. So uh, some of our larger initiatives, which I'll mention, it's our Parkinson's Progressive Markers Initiative. It's our longitudinal study. Uh, we have a tools consortium uh, where we have uh, animal models and assays uh, that are relevant to the disease. We have a, a clinical trial referral site for to refer Parkinson's disease patients uh, to relevant uh, clinical trials to help speed up uh, uh, drugs to market. So the challenges in Parkinson's disease. There are no objective measures, no, no objective clinical measures of Parkinson's disease. What exists today is what's called the universal Parkinson's disease rating scale. 60 questions where the neurologist rates the patient from one to five uh, on, on their disease severity. So how well you could tie your shoes how well you could balance yourself while walking uh, a seven meter test. There are no biomarkers and just not enough longitudinal clinical data uh, to go on. And uh, we wish we had our own Framingham heart study. You know, we don't have the 75 years of data uh, to know all the phenotypes of the disease. So this is a challenge that faces us uh, at the foundation. So we've invested $100 million in our own uh, longitudinal study that's called the Parkinson's uh, Progression Markers Initiative. We're in our third year. Um, it's a very extensive study. There's 800 participants, 400, uh, which are Parkinson's disease patients, 200 controls, and then uh, 200 of a, of a genetic cohort. Uh, these patients, uh, we sample their blood, their CSF, urine, MRI, PET scans, we perform a full clinical test battery, including the universal Parkinson's disease rating scale. And we do this at time zero, three months, six months, 12 months, and once a year thereafter for five years. So it's a lot of information. Oops. Um, and we want to make the data available as broadly as possible. And it's our intention uh, to share as much of our data to the research community as we possibly can. 
And we chose Transmart because, well, you know, we've hosted our, our, our data at Loney. We're hosting our data, a PBMI data. You can apply for it. Um, it's at Loney, at, being housed at USC. Um, but uh, we got a little hint uh, from Jay Bergeron one day, called me up and said, hey, uh, you, know, we, you know you have your data, but we, we've got this uh, platform. It's called Transmart. Uh, we want to take a look at it, and we want to show you, give you a demo. And he presented to us online, and we took a look at it. He showed us how quickly he could do some analysis. It was very, very compelling. And then uh, I got invited, invited by um, Magali Haas to uh, come to her uh, meeting at Orion Bio Networks. And they're doing this uh, entire analysis, which you saw earlier, on muscular sclerosis uh, on, with, with the Transmart platform. And thinking about it, you know, we want to make it as easy as possible for people to do research on Parkinson's disease. And it seems like this is becoming the de facto standard. And as soon as I said to Jay, hey, can I have a copy of the configuration file? I said, sure. And then three other pharmaceutical companies called me up and asked for the same files. So it was, uh, it was pretty much a no-brainer uh, for us. And we decided to go uh, with the Transmart platform. And we want to put it on the internet and offer a public uh, data portal where people can apply to and, and just come in and use our data, download configuration files. Uh, uh, our, first, uh, with our first instantiation, working with Reuters, uh, we want to make we're going to make uh, we're going to make not only the PPMI data set available, but we're also going to make uh, the ADNI, the Alzheimer's disease uh, imaging uh, data that's normalized uh, with PPMI available. So, if anyone who has access rights to PPMI and or ADNI uh, can have access to our instantiation and just start their analysis right away, download the configuration files they want. And if you notice here, um, we have a where we're coming up with a wearables platform, and we have a patient registry that that we're also going to launch uh, late this winter. And so uh, we have contracted with Intel uh, through our relationship with uh, Andy Grove, and we have been. Um, putting wearable sensors, uh, Android phone with a Pebble watch, taking in ambulatory data of Parkinson's disease patients. The platform's still under development. It's running Hadoop. It's, it's going to be hardware agnostic. It's designed to take in wearable sensor data uh, from the multitude of, of wearable sensors that are coming out uh, in the next 18 months. And we want to make it. Uh, uh, broadly available. We want to put these on uh, as many pa Parkinson's disease patients as we possibly can. And the reason behind it is with all that data that we've been collecting with PPMI and working with the advanced analytics team at Intel, we asked them, well, can you take a look at the PPMI data? And they said, sure, we'll, 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 have, a, we'll have a look. And the first thing they said to us is, look, you know, there is a huge disparity between the biological information and clinical information. As I mentioned, the universal Parkinson's disease rating scale, the clinical, the standard clinical rating scale for Parkinson's disease is only 60 questions. We also put in probably four other uh, uh, cognitive test batteries. So that only adds another, maybe another 60 questions. And this is what we have to go on in terms of the clinical profile of the patient. And then when you match it against all the biological data, if you scaled it to the height of the Empire State Building, the relevant uh, relative size of the clinical data is a tenth of a micron. And so we're hoping that the wearable sensors will bridge that gap. There has not been a systematic method of capturing 
uh, clinical information uh, of the patient. So uh, working with Intel, uh, they're putting up a, bringing up a Hadoop system up in the, up with the Amazon Web Services. And uh, the, the group, uh, advanced analytics group in, at Intel in Israel, uh, we have uh, six PhD scientists working with us on developing the system. It's going to pick up about a gig of data per patient per day. And we want to be able to upload you know, terabytes of data on, on, on these patients. And then use advanced machine learning analytics to have it spit out clinically relevant information and deliver that into Transmart. But it's not only going to be ambulatory information. Um, Intel has acquired a company called Basis. Does anyone have a Basis watch? It's, it's, it's the next uh, generation of these fitness monitors that could actually, uh, that has an optic sensor in the back. It captures your heart rate. It knows your uh, galvanic skin connectivity of your skin. It measures your temperature. Um, it's 92% as accurate as a polysonogram uh, uh, for sleep studies, except you don't have to go to a hospital and get wired up. You can just sleep in your own bed and uh, get uh, metrics on your, your REM sleep. You know, you're right here. It's like, this is, this is actually my data on the system. We can get uh, data on my light, where I have REM, where I have deep sleep. Um, it, was a, it was a good day. I got a sleep score of 91%. Uh, so in Israel, they comment on how much sleep I'm getting. And I tell them, look, this is how hard I've been working. Uh, and you get a heat chart, right? So this is like your, you know, my, my daily activity. We think that this kind of information could be revolutionary and really kind of uh, matching what matters. How, what, what are the clinical, what are the clinical endpoints uh, to the biology? And we'll be including this system into our patient registry. Well, patients will be. Uh, self-reporting uh, their disease status, where they are in the disease, when they've been diagnosed. We'll be giving them wearable sensors. They'll have an opportunity to get direct feedback uh, from these sensors, hopefully some value uh, reports they could share with their, with their neurologist. And all this data will get fed, fed back into our informatics database. This is uh, an interesting graphic just to demonstrate um, some of the power uh, with these advanced analytics. There's a company called IASTI in Palo Alto, California. They are an expert on the topological analysis of data. This is a dimensionless way of looking at uh, mass amounts of information uh, in a dimensionless way. It's, it's the science, it's the mathematical discipline of giving data shape. And we hosted a data challenge two years ago on just accelerometry data coming off an Android phone. We had nine patients, nine controls, where Android, Android phones for two months. All they had to do is just wear them. And then we hosted a data challenge that asked the world. We put it up on Kaggle and said, um, are you able to differentiate Parkinson's disease patients from controls? And do you, can you find a means to measure their progression over this period? Now, IASI didn't participate in the competition. It turned out that a machine learning architectural firm in Milan won the contest. It was very interesting. Uh, but then IASI came and approached us two months later and said, look, we've taken your data and we think we found something. And this kind of this Mercedes symbol uh, came out in their algorithm. And we asked them, well, what does this mean? They go, well, uh, we didn't know what, what, what this was. But then 
we took the same, we took our algorithm and just pointed on a single patient and we ended up with the same shape. He took the Fourier transform of the accelerometry data at a set, certain sample frequency and they were able to detect what they believe is when the patient is fully ambulatory, when, they're, when their medication is kicking in at 100%. And then this is when, you know, this is when the, the medication is wearing off and this is when they're completely frozen. So they believe that they found potentially a diagnostic tool uh, with our sample data set. Uh, we've hence, since then, have run a, another trial for, for data labeling purposes uh, with the Android phone and then an, another uh, accelerometer on, worn on the wrist, and they're going to try to validate their algorithm ag algorithms against it. But this is just an example of what could happen. So this is our grand grand scheme. Uh, we want to make it. We want to make a, a research portal out of a transport. Make it publicly available. We'll be adding our observational studies. This is PPMI, which I just talked about. But we also have smaller ones uh, with BioFind and LARC2. Um, uh, we have, we'll be also offering ADNI, as I mentioned. There are some uh, seminal longitudinal studies uh, on Parkinson's disease that are 20, 30 years old. We want to take that out of the archives and make it uh, publicly available. And we think that we can, you know, despite the fact that uh, the older uh, patient consent forms, you know, uh, were narrowly written, we believe that uh, with this new kind of ruling on having to publish data, if we could run a, a data science uh, study on them, we'll be able to publish them uh, on, our, on the Transmart instance. So this is the hope. And then we also intend to connect with clinical networks and also add that to the system. So this is a, uh, just a kind of topological uh, diagram of how we are, in, what we intend to provide in our, in our research portal. We want to allow uh, third party analytic firms like Ayazi, I mentioned, companies like Biancor, I'm, I'm the only remote employee uh, of the Fox Foundation. We're located in New York um, in Silicon Valley. And so it, uh, I'm able to interface with a lot of the um, analytic firms and uh, talk to them about this uh, dynamic and work with them to provide solutions on analytics for, for, PT, uh, for Parkinson's disease. Uh, we're going to also work with Reuters on providing their pathway models uh, onto the platform, so uh, researchers will be researchers will be able to access and benefit from that content as well on top of uh, the data that we provide. I was having a hard time advancing this. I think I'm frozen here. Huh. Did I tell you I used to work for Microsoft? Mm -hmm. You could maybe take this and maybe uh, shut this down, and restart it, maybe.
Okay. Let's catch ourselves up here. So long story short, I think we're going to have some challenges in, in ensuring the scalability of the platform, because we are going to make this publicly available. And I'm really happy to uh, have our foundation uh, join uh, this consortium uh, on Transmart, and hopefully, hoping to exchange our, our experiences and get your best practices on how we can make this available to the public and how we can make the user experience one that more and more researchers will come on board, will share their data, and create this contribution to this uh, data community. Thank you very much. OK, uh, any questions for Ken? Really exciting. Uh, you know, EK has been talking about integrated sensors in the platform for a long time. So it's uh, you know it's uh, it's really uh, an opportunity for us to collect data in the home and link that into a clinical study. So do you have some ongoing studies now, or is it just? Well, uh, you see, this is this is this represents. Um, we call our Fox Trial Finder. This is our uh -huh. patient. This is our uh, clinical trial referral website. Okay. Um, this is the this is the Intel platform that collects the okay. uh, ambulatory data with the wearable sensors. This is the patient registry Fox Fox Insight, where patients will be able to come in, log on, put their profiles in, uh, self-report uh, uh -huh. their their clinical status. It'll provide them a t with a tool to where they could share their data uh, to whomever they want with their physicians. Um, and then that is all connected. Uh, this is our instance of, of Transmart, which will provide the, the research portal. And so, um, you know, we're, we're looking and working with Reuters on how to make this uh, system scalable. Uh, we're thinking that we'll have to have multiple instances as the, as the load uh, requires over the over the internet, and so uh, we'll. It's a. I think um, we'll have our first iteration late December, uh, early winter, January of next year, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, you'll be finding out about it. Uh, everyone will be able to register and and uh, be able to see our data, download our configuration files, and um, we'll be putting as much of our data as, as possible and try to make other data sets publicly available as well. Super. Um, I encourage you to come to the content um, meeting tomorrow, one of our 3C meetings. Uh, this is a fantastic example to get us, uh, you know, going along and getting our content appropriately, uh, you know, managed and out there to the community. And thanks to Jay for making this great contact. This is just wonderful. Yeah, Gil. Ken, this is uh, tremendous. Gil Oman. Uh, I wanted to ask you about the relationship, if any, with uh, patients like me. I remember when Jamie, I was at one of their, a couple of their meetings actually, where they were mobilizing to do some studies through patients and families, and Parkinson's was one of their first topics. Mm -hmm. uh, is there something going on between the two organizations? Not yet, not yet. Um, we're perfectly open uh, for possibilities at this time. So um, I've just come on board. We are, we're just creating our, our data strategy. This is one of our, our biggest moves. And uh, we'd love to be able to uh, talk to Jamie Haywood and, and uh, see, share best practices and see, what, so we'll see, see how we could collaborate. Yeah, well, when he sees you've done this, I think you'll get interested. Okay. Very good. Yeah. Oh, great. Well, great. Yeah. We're looking forward to it. You know, we, 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 bipolar disease is one where actually the cell phones are helping us because, as you can imagine, a man, manic patient mm -hmm. is doing a lot at 3 in the morning, and you can see it pretty carefully, closely with the cell phone. So, so, 
I think it's kind of fascinating to see Transmart emerging as a publication platform, a way to distribute data in very detailed data to a very large portion of the, of the world, really. I'm just wondering how this might work, and maybe this isn't for you, but for everyone at the Transmart Foundation. As we see three or four or five more organizations like yours offering this wonderful facility, we're going to have a lot of Transmart instances that we're going to have to deal with. And, and I was wondering if there are any plans to institute some standards for ontology or for access or for even integration, because you could imagine that if there are a couple of different neuroscience platforms looking between them might become of interest. Right, so I'm aware of the CDISC standard uh, by the FDA, so we're following that. Mm -hmm. And I know ADNI is as, as well, so uh, our first instance is gonna, like I said, we're gonna have, we're gonna, we'll have the ADNI data and we'll have PPMI normalized to it, so uh, folks will be able to be able to look across the two data sets fairly uniformly where we can match them up. And you know, so we'll, we'll be looking to the FDA and, and, and for, the, for those data standards and make sure that we apply them because we want to make, at the end of the day, we want to make this as relevant uh, to pharma, you know, for the pharma, farm pharma companies to use yeah. you know, uh, for their research and get drugs out to market. Mm -hmm. This will be a topic of discussion tomorrow at the content um, committee meeting. Uh, you know, and, and one of the uh, simple solutions that we're uh, looking at employing is a simple um, dictionary and, uh, you know, directory of data sets and, you know, uh, that with the appropriate metadata standards, uh, you know, we've got a review system that we're looking at to make sure that the right metadata standards are in place. Uh, Michael and, uh, you know, Braun Kessler from uh, CDISC are part of the eTrix team. Okay. And uh, we're working very closely with them. And Sarah uh, is from the FDA here, and uh, she's been active in looking at the standards and interoperability. And Nancy Beck from Reagan Udall. So you're in actually in a good place to have this discussion over the next few days. Working um, together. I'm, I'm really, I'm really looking forward to it. I'm really happy to join this consortium and uh, share as many uh, findings that we have, and look forward to um, learning best practices from. So those of you who are much more experienced on the, on the platform. Uh, one of the other things that we're, be, we're going to be doing is we're going to be um, launching uh, a, a clinical trial, actually in the Netherlands at Radboud University right. with 1,000 patients. Uh, we'll be instrumenting them. I don't know, do you, Garrett, do you know uh, Dr. Bas Bloom at Radboud University Medical Center? Bas Bloom at Radboud in Nijmegen. You're going to find out soon, Garrett. And I, Megan, I mean, uh, a thousand patients, at Red, uh, you know, using Radboud um, Hospital as a as the as the main clinical trial site. But uh, Dr. Boss Bloom has networked 99 clinics throughout the country, focused on Parkinson's disease. There you go. And uh, it's it's Work. very impressive. So we'll be working with him, and also in the, in the states, we'll be instrumenting uh, another thousand patients through our patient registry called Fox Insight. And so, and all this data will be transported into Transmart, so. Okay, Ken, thanks so much. It's really wonderful to have you. And Thank you. Look forward to hearing from you tomorrow. Uh, Keith will make the honors, Andy and Sirmo. Thank you. Uh, one, that was a great talk, Ken. Thanks very much. Really appreciate it. So one of the things that uh, is important to us as a community is being able to come together um, like this once a year, uh, which we do at the annual meeting and at other uh, hackathons, et cetera. And one of the things that enables us to do this uh, is, in fact, our sponsors and our members. So the foundation is, is a member-supported nonprofit entity. Uh, our members help support the, the foundation financially on an ongoing basis. And then for each event, we have a series of sponsors that come together, and, and they help us support the activities that we're doing uh, and we, we definitely want to acknowledge them and thank them for their support. So right now I'd like to introduce one of our gold sponsors, uh, Thomson Reuters. Uh, Andy Hope with Thomson Reuters will be giving us a, a few remarks. And then uh, at the end of that, we'll have uh, sort of a summary of the day and uh, we'll move on to the, uh, the after the event uh, activities. So I'd like to turn it over to Andy. And uh, again, thank you guys for your sponsorship. It's fantastic. Thanks, Keith.